Hey guys, just from a uh, schedule standpoint, Frank and Decker and Josh may come down at some point. I just sent them a text. I said, let us know when you want to come down. They're, they may watch the five quarterbacks. And that way it's just a heads up for them going into the combine. Just, we have to start making decisions here pretty soon. Can I say something, Scott? Oh, Absolutely. So, actually, just in respect to quarterback play, I'll just say this. When I was coaching uh, Peyton Manning and watching him, watching how he operated as a kind of personal coaching exercise, I was just like, well, what makes this guy special? Um, and so I came up with this five traits of great. This is what I got from watching Peyton Manning. Um, and, and this is how I think about quarterback play. Number one was the quarterback should be the toughest guy on the team. I mean, mentally and physically, a mindset, a relentless mindset of nothing's going to stop me. It's a toughness, it's a confidence that is palpable, and the whole team feels it. Bryce Young, what a talent. Number two uh, is footwork and finish. Dave's play from the ground up at any position, so he's got to have good footwork. But you see the elusiveness, the quick feet of Bryce Young. Three is accuracy. Bryce Young threads the needle. You know, it's tight windows, we all know. I mean, accuracy is really important. He just threw that Number four is playmaking ability, the, the uncanny ability to make plays in the clutch. You know, when it really matters the most, somebody needs to make a stinking play. The great quarterbacks you just find a way to do it. In the end zone, touchdown Alabama! Check this out right here. Young's dead to rights. Boom, flips around and sidearms it across his body. Dime, touchdown time. And then, you know, number five is what's called the X factor. Just a way to say all the other intangibles. I like to say the quarterback is a multiplier effect. So if you have the offense and the team right here and it runs through the quarterback, X times one equals X. But we, you know, we want him to be a multiplier. When you put the team and the offense through him, you should get a bigger outcome because he makes everybody else better. Next stop, National Football League. Panthers start their draft party in about 30 minutes, welcoming what they expect to be thousands of fans for a big celebration day. They get to take their quarterback. And Scott Fitterer and Frank Reich did their homework to get this decision right, but a key part of this decision is the support from owner David Tepper. And one thing to watch as you get into the draft about Tepper, he's close with his mom, Roberta, and this is her 91st birthday today. He is planning to have a card taped to his computer in the draft room telling her happy birthday. And so a big day for everyone in the Panthers organization. I like that. It's her birthday today. How old? 91. It's almost as old as you. <laughs> One, two, three. Perfect. How nice is it to have a first pick? <laughs> When we were in Lexington, Kentucky, and I, all the coaches were sitting around the table, and I was like, I can't believe we're here right now. Like, that was the first moment I had when it really like clicked, like this is all really happening. I said, remember when we just started our coaching search, and now here we are? Oh, yeah. It's like a surreal moment. You guys ready? We've got breaking news out of the NFL. All right, we have some breaking news right now. This is legitimately huge news. I think it all started really back towards the end of the season and right after the season. Our defense was in a point where we felt good about the defense. The offensive line was at a point where we felt good about it. We decided, hey, listen, now's the opportunity to go up and draft and develop our own quarterback. The Carolina Panthers have been searching for the last several years for their franchise quarterback. We've heard all offseason that Carolina is looking for a quarterback. I listened to Scott Fitter. You knew that they just wanted to draft their guy. We were picking nine at the time. And we didn't think, looking at it, that these quarterbacks would be there at nine. 
So we knew we had to make a move. Kevin, let's give you a little bit of the backstory. These talks have been going on and have intensified since the combine. As early as the combine, Scott had been doing his job, doing a great job talking to a lot of people and about us moving up. I met with Ryan Poles a couple of times in Indy and then came back home. And then on Tuesday, we talked again and Ryan had a little action and he was looking to make a move sooner than later. So we said, okay, how can we be involved in this process? Scott Fitter has been clear really from the beginning. He's going to be in every deal, and they have been aggressive in, I would say, everything they've done. We had a trade to go up to two, and the Texans were going to trade up to one. And Chicago was going to be down to two, and we were going to trade with Chicago. The Bears had multiple suitors for the number one overall pick. Houston was interested, and other teams checked in with Chicago. The trade didn't quite work out exactly how we had planned. On Friday, I just said, hey, Ryan, what if we just came to one? What would that cost? You know, Scott got a value that he would accept for us to move up to one. You know, we knew that we were the bird in hand. They, know, they knew they had to trade with us, the trade that they, they could like. What I'll never forget is sitting in Scott's office on the phone with Mr. Tepper and, and the crew of us sitting in there, and bam. The Carolina Panthers. The Panthers. The Carolina Panthers. Oh my goodness, the Carolina Panthers are doing big things. Sources say they have traded up from the number nine overall pick all the way to number one. The number one pick. Number one overall pick. The number one draft pick. Unfortunately, we had to give up DJ Moore, which we absolutely did not want to do at the time, but it had to be a part of the process to get to one. You know, it was a joint decision. Everybody was on board with it. I think at the time, and, and we knew that if we didn't do it then, we may lose it. There was a crack that a little window opened up for us. No, not to get to three, not to get to two, to get all the way to one. And no one flinched, and no one flinched. Hey, Panthers fans, I believe we got some aggressiveness going on, and keep pounding is in the building. All right, let's go! Hi. Hey, how are you? What have you been up to? Quite a bit. <laughs> How different is your off-season approach and everything you do now that you're one versus nine? Yeah, I mean, it, it changes because it narrows down your, the field you're going to take. You know, at nine, you have to be ready for every different scenario. You're sitting at one. Now you get to decide who do you want. We have all of these, these experts on our staff that we're going to rely on as we go through this process. And there's going to be a lot of tough conversations, uh, a lot of good conversations, and uh, you know, we're going to take it all in and make the best decision. Where does he rank among the top three? This guy's physical traits, I think, appeal to a lot of people. Thorough is the word that is going to be used. It's a process. Everybody is going to be involved, including owner David Tepper, including Scott Fitter, including Frank Reich. You see a guy all of you want to work with? I think the biggest thing with him is he's super smart. I said going into the year, a lot of people were intrigued by this guy. And they said about him that he's a linebacker playing quarterback. Physically, talent-wise, this is a, a rare guy. I'm betting on this kid to help our team. It seems like there's something special about this guy as a person, you know. I think that's what we have to confirm. At the Combine, you know, you only get 18 minutes with him. That's our first time to really sit down and get a feel for, is he the guy that we want in the huddle? Is he the, does he have the makeup that a quarterback needs to be successful? So I'm going to install a play to you real quick. At the end, we're going to ask you to get up here and give us the critical coaching points you read, as much detail as you can remember. All right. You know, so much of this quarterback position is the neck and above. How you process, how you can manage the game at the line of scrimmage, how you can handle all of the outside distractions and pressures. Talk to me about this play. What about the back? Just take me through it, man. Like formation, kind of what you had going on with the motion and giving the play call. So this was an acquired moment right here, right? We're backed up. <laughs> not at in all. In Knoxville, right? Yeah, not so, at all. So, so you're a smooth talker. Can you get loud? Talk to me about this, this read. Talk to me. So what those routes change if the inside lane receiver was on the ball? The Panthers have almost seven full weeks to go through their process and make a final decision about what to do. We can get through our progressions because if you're bringing, you know, this play, if you're bringing five versus empty, if you're bringing six or whatever it is, you're vulnerable in the back end, so we want to get blocked up and then go attack. So we're, we're going to the pro day now. It started off with uh, CJ up in Columbus. It's literally a process for us. You know, yeah. like we're not going into it going well. It's probably this guy, but it could be that guy. It's just yeah. like we got to evaluate these dudes, right. and 
and we'll take it up to, you know, up to whenever that time is that you go, hey, we know. The pro days can be chaotic because they're back to back to back. You get to see them throw, you get to see them interact up close. He's a nasty talented dude, man. The accuracy is uncanny. Yeah, Just right. dropping it in, dropping right. it in, dropping it in. That's why we're here, to come see him in person. Yeah, come come check him out. It's not just always about throwing, it's about the leadership and command that they have during the pro day. Is he ready to go? He's ready. He's ready. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he's impressive. He's a great throw. Nah, he ain't gonna flex, which I love. No, no. That's it, that's what I wanted to see right there. To hear how Jim Caldwell hears it, and Thomas, and Scott, and Dan, and just everybody, yeah. you know, just the feedback. I think it's great organizationally, you know. Yeah. Would he look up to kind of model his game after? How's he progressing, like throwing wise, physically, and all that stuff? Good teammate, too. Yeah. Good teammate. Yeah. They're going to visit with all these guys before and after the pro day. They're going to bring them all to the facility, do all the work on all the top quarterbacks. No, I can definitely flick it. That's what you want to see right there. That was even more impressive. I was just thinking that. I was just thinking that. And then we have him into our stadium here for a 30 visit. And he has time to sit with the coaches. They get him on the board. He visits with everybody in our facility here. How do you feel? You feel right and feel natural? And what have you learned through this process? It looks like the Carolina Panthers are set up to do some damage. Frank Reich, Josh McCown, Jim Caldwell to help. I mean, it's a heck of a staff they put together. And the question is for Carolina, who are they going to choose? said that you know he hadn't asked you who you prefer as that number one pick. Has he asked you yet, and have you come to a consensus yet? He did. He actually said he came in my office uh, yesterday at some point and and asked the question. You know, it's kind of like a proposal of sorts. You know, um, but and I said yes. <laughs> no, there is consensus, and we're excited. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll announce that Thursday at about eight o'clock. Is it rain, sleet, or snow? This party is going to go. The Carolina Panthers are ready to go on the clock with that number one draft pick tonight. Thousands of fans are expected to fill the stadium, ready to hear the name of the player they hope will have a big impact on the team's future. Bryce Young. Bryce Young. We think Bryce Young. Do you know who the guy is? I mean, absolutely. It's a quarterback. Everybody's under the assumption it's going to be Bryce, so, you know, we'll see. Bad weather, doesn't matter. You guys turned up to be here for this moment and for this team. What's up, Jay? What's up, man? You all right? Hey, how you doing? You doing all right? Hey, what up? What's up, man? You all right? Man, I hope the rain stops, buddy. It's too fun of a night. What's up, man? How you doing? Keep that rain away, all right, buddy? Yeah. So I guess you're liking Bryce, huh? Well, no soon enough. What's going on, Panther fans? It's a beautiful day in Carolina, right? In a little while, we're going to change the course of the franchise. I'm telling you, I can feel it. We start with that number one pick. Got a chance to talk to Frank Reich a little bit over the last couple weeks, just about evaluating these different quarterbacks. And how do you break it down to make that number one pick? And he told me he's got the five traits of great. A little bit that went into what Carolina used to decide who they're going to take with that number one overall pick. We got this, Frank. We got it. Coach, let's go. Here we go. We've worked our tails off for this moment. Yeah. Scott, do you want the ring for Frank? <laughs> I said I was going to bring a rose. <laughs> a rose. <laughs> Will you accept this rose? <laughs> hey, well, if that was the proposal, today we were walking down the aisle with our guy, right? Just let me know when the honeymoon is so I can get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no honeymoon. It's time to get the show started. The 2023 NFL Draft is now officially open. The Carolina Panthers are on the clock. All right, let's go. Here we go. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I could cry. You excited? I'm like shaking and sweating at the same time. Look at that, in the rain. 
Well, I tell you what, the people have come out in droves for this time. This is awesome. I asked earlier somebody, I said, does, does the person know? And the one said, I don't think so now, unless it happens now. Checking in on the draft room, look, they've said for days that they know who it's gonna be. And to be very honest, uh, the league essentially asks them, uh, give us a couple minutes. Hey, buddy. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> John Schneider wants to know if you want to trade. Sure, sure, why not, John? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I'll talk to you. All right. Let's do it. Let's go, guys. I'm blessed. How are you? Good, good. We're excited. I'm going to hand you over to our owner, David Tepper. For sure. I appreciate it. Right. Hey, Bryce. How are we doing? How you doing? You remember in uh, Arizona Super Bowl when I told you we were going to pick a quarterback this year? We're not going to wait till next year? <laughs> yes, I do remember that. Remember that conversation? I wasn't kidding. <laughs> so you want to trade in Sweet Home Alabama for some Sweet Carolina? Man, I can't wait. Bryce. How are we doing, Coach? Hey, man, congratulations to you and Thanks. your family. Hey, listen, we know you're not only a class act, but can't wait for this team that you're coming to. You're going to love this team. This is going to be a great fit. I can't wait for you to be part of this team. I can't wait either, Coach. Thank you so much. It, this means the world to me. Bryce, congratulations. We are excited. Thanks. It's, it's a long Thanks. process, but uh, you're, you're our guy, man. And just come here. Just, all you have to do is be you, and that's mm -hmm. all we need. So congratulations. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right, for sure. See you tomorrow. All right. The Panthers, they've made a, a pick in Carolina, and it's been completed. And welcome to the National Football League, Bryce Young. The first ever, first overall selection out of the University of Alabama. How about if you're taking that ball? To be the first guy to walk walk that walk in the draft. That's something. That is something right there. We're getting a mature individual who played at the highest level. This is not just a quarterback of a football team. You're a quarterback of a franchise. You're a quarterback of a city. You're a quarterback for every one of us. I mean, we had it here recently with Superman and Cam Newton, and it'd be nice to be able to get it again. And, and we believe we have that guy in Bryce Young. I think we might be bringing up our owner, David Tepper. Might be walking up right around the corner right now. Coach Frank. How we doing, Panther fans? <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> the quarterback we're getting, he's our kind of guy. But make no mistake about it, right? We got the best quarterback in college football this year, right here in this stadium. Really, a couple years ago, when our area scouts went through, Robert Haynes went through, they really liked him then. Just over the last couple of years, the study of him was something that they really felt strongly about. When we met in February, there was just overwhelming conviction for him during our draft meetings. He's an elite processor. He's the point guard for our offense. Super smart, poised, instinctual. Very good athleticism to improvise and escape. Coach O'Brien down there said he's the second smartest quarterback he's ever been around. And this guy just has that it factor. He's clutch in big moments. Big situations are not big for this kid. Everything you see physically and mentally, you can see on tape. This guy's a winner. And he's been the best player on the best team against the best competition from the time he was, you know, eight years old, literally. He, he checked every box that we had. You know, we tested him, we talked to him, we had dinner with him. And just every time we met with him, we felt more and more convicted. Where are you going right here, man? You knew this was good? Yeah, I got you. You're like Steph Curry, man. you <laughs> like Steph Curry. <laughs> Two guys got him, and then the scramble, they leave him, and he has the presence to throw him the ball. He got into how he was studying the film 
and some of the things that he said about that, like Scott, we were just, you know, I, I looked at Mr. Tepper, he looked at Scott, you know, and it was like, this is next level stuff. The other guys said good stuff too, but like this was just at a level that was different. We had dinner with him last night and it was, I'm gonna call him the brain. That's a nickname, it's just the recall, the communication skills. So he'll be all wired the right way from Italy. We're being raised by a psychologist. Yeah. You left everything that was comfortable yeah. to go in a place that almost is the definition of oh, yeah. uncomfortable. No question. Because that's how bad you wanted to be great. And super accurate too. This is what you see on tape. He's a multiplier. Love to be around him and continue to help him grow and develop and achieve his goals and we can become great together, man. The new face of the franchise, Bryce Young, will be in Charlotte today. And the fans are pumped and ready to see him in the black and blue. Oh, this is the place for you. This is the right spot. Everyone's so excited. Look at this. Great to see you. Great to, to have you here, bro. Yeah. How's it feel? Surreal. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a whirlwind for sure. It's Ready to get rolling. Definitely. How you doing, coach? man? Great. How about you? Great to see you. Great to be here. Looking great to good be in those here. colors, man. This is a great place. It's a great locker room. Everything's right about it. Everything's right about it. So excited. Yeah. How you doing? I'm telling her, put man. You been through the locker room yet? Not yet, not yet. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah so we have defense on this side, offense is down here. Quarterbacks uh, far away from me. <laughs> this, uh, this is where we'll head yet to get started, all right? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. Oh. Man. <laughs> Sir, you guys gotta check it out in here. Here, come on, Mom. Oh, wow. Nice and spacious, you know? <laughs> Little drawers, get organized. I know. I want y'all go ahead and look at God. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> you did this. We. Well, yes. we did. We did. But you threw the touchdown. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this stadium is amazing. Oh, you said, what, by the way, you see that guy up there? Yeah. <laughs> That's up crazy. Over there, but I what do you think? How's it feel? <sighs> It feels amazing. This is this is surreal, honestly. It's crazy. It's this has really been a crazy like 24 hours, but and I can't wait till we can just start talking ball, exactly. start talking about you know our guys, and, you know how how we see it, how we see it together, how you see it. Yeah, it's been a long time coming before I can finally talk some ball, so I'm I'm ready for that part. I know. And your dad said you like bingo a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. Thank you, Kansas City, for your passion. Thank you for being here. And welcome back to night two of the 2023 NFL Draft. Last night, in front of 125,000 people here in Kansas City Damn. and 34 million viewers, wow. we welcome 31 extraordinary players wow. into the NFL family. Tonight, as you can see, I'm You're in the zone right now. I feel it. You're a lean, mean fighting machine. There we go. <laughs> you know what movie that's from? Uh, Stripes? That's right, Stripes. You're really good at movies, actually. I need a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> this is 
go, guys. It was so great last night. Let's do it again. Rounds two and three are on the air. It started at 32 that night. We we're at 39. There were a couple spots that we wanted to address going into it. And so we counted back, okay, we knew these players would go. There'd be a few little you know, hiccups in there and guys would go here and there. But we knew we'd get one of three players that we were really targeting at that point. You good with that? Yeah. With the 32nd pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. With the 34th pick. With the 36th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. Seattle has submitted a decision. Indianapolis is now on the clock. call. So we're getting one of the two. Wow. We're getting Mingo and Bergeron. Oh, come on. Right it's Mingo and Bergeron. And we're probably going to pick. So you guys know. I'm sorry to interrupt, guys. The Colts just traded down a second time, and now they just moved down from 38 down to 44. Atlanta just moved up. Atlanta is now on the clock. Who's on the clock? Atlanta. Oh. Uh, we have got some movement early on here. Rick's keeping track of everything for us. And now it is time to find out who the Falcons are taking here. We have three choices. Mingo is our first choice of those three. So we were really nervous while we were on the clock. Usually I don't get too nervous because we have options. But we saw that there's a little shelf in there. Mingo is there, and so it's kind of like a real relief. Atlanta has submitted its pick. Bergeron, Bergeron. Was it really? Yeah. All right. That's what we do. That's why we do it. There you go. There we go. Let's go. Work it There you go. Hey, Adrian, how disappointed would we be? Huh? We're lucky he was our guy. Hey, guys, we're taking Mingo. Next guy is uh, Mingo. Everybody really likes this kid. He's football smart. He can learn to line up in multiple positions. Leader, he's got the ear of his teammates. Um, got a lot of influence in the locker room down there. I saw a physical slot. He's strong, powerful route runner. Might be a good third down target. And I thought this kid had running back like rag. Yeah, I, I really like this kid too. He shows good release quicks. He's savvy to alter route tempo. Uh, he's got good coverage awareness and excellent ball skills. Uh, you can make a catch in a crowd. I like him, man. Jonathan, Coach Reich here. How you doing? Good, yeah, how you doing? Hey, we're excited to pick you right here. You ready? Yes, sir. You ready to come be a Carolina Panther? Oh, yeah, I'm ready to go. Hey, Jonathan, how you doing? Good, how you doing? I'm doing good, good. I got to tell you a story. It's a true story. Right before here, about an hour ago, I was, uh, you know, I was on the phone with Steve Smith, and I, yeah. said, and I said, "Who should I pick? Who should we pick?" He said, "Mingo." Okay. You know, he knows who. You know who he is, Steve Smith. He used to be a receiver. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I know make Steve sure you know who that is. Okay. Anyways, is listen. There? Congratulations. We're happy to have you here. Okay. Let's go. We had such a vision for this guy, what he could do for us offensively, the way Frank and Thomas are gonna use him and how Sean Jefferson can develop him. Like, we're really excited to get Jonathan. Probably out of uh, all these guys on this list that we've known so far, he fits our Z receiver to a T. Very strong at the uh, point of contact. I mean, he's gonna move DBs off their spot. I mean, he's very physical when it comes to that. But before is what we want as a complete receiver in the run and pass game, this kid is it. Carolina Panthers select Jonathan Mingo, wide receiver, Ole Miss. It is now time for the third round. There's a lot going on here in this draft, trying to keep and keep track of everything. There, there's a lot of information that flies back and forth and a lot of different conversations, but it, it's fun. It, that's the rush of the draft. But really, if you're prepared and you set the board right, you should be able to sit back and just trust what you've done. Back to the tight end position. Hello. What are you doing, man? You've gone through every scenario, and really the answers are on the board. Hello? No, not much, man. Just uh, trying to put this team together. Hey, you've been busy, huh? <laughs> take, take a break. Hey, uh, just a quick question. I'm not sure we're, we'll even do it. 
No. It's too far. Uh, hey, are you guys going to stay there? All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Yes, yeah, so you take those all that information into account. Do we need to move? Where's the ledge at? Does it fall off here? You try not to ever push and take a need, but sometimes need and value intersect. Uh, we're trying to get some. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Good. See you. Go with your go. You know. Right. Who's that call? Yeah, you're Hello? Hey, Omar. Yep, hold on. Dan. Who's that? Omar. Hey, what's up? This is Pittsburgh right now. They're one up. What did they say? Uh, hey, Fit. Omar. They were on one second. Yeah. Okay. Talk to Omar. Omar, hey. This is Scott. Would you guys do it for 132? When you're making deals, it's, you're trying to get in a position to get a player. It, you're either moving up. I, I love moving back because you acquire picks, but sometimes when you get a player that fills a need, that fits the athletic profile, and it does exactly what you want, that's when it's worth it. That's when you go up and you take a shot. Yeah, you, you'll do it for 132? All right, man, we'll do it. We'll send it in. Okay, thanks. All right, guys, we're making a trade. Yep. Wow. Yeah, you know, I have great people around me. You know, I've got Dan to my left, who's very calming and understands the draft. You know, you got Dave to the right, who's great at understanding value. There's a run on pass rushers. So, well, you're not going to they're, they're going to be gone. Yeah. Yeah. We're winning that by a lot. What, what are we winning that by? We we won it by 22. Frank understands the game of football better than anyone. So much knowledge around you. You just listen to that, filter that, and then trust the board. It's going to be uh, E.J. Johnson from Oregon. If that's our conviction, guys, we have that's to do it there. That's our conviction, guy. Yeah. This is what we need to do this. Yeah. All right, you want to? Yeah, call. He's a good player. Let's go. OK, this guy, D.J. He's got the first step for somebody at his size that's really mm -hmm. impressive. He's physical because of his body, because of his length, because of what he does in the run game. I really like the starting point that you would start with now. I like his size. I like the uh, physicality he plays with. He's got some explosion. He can set the edge in a run game. So I, I, I'm really high on him. All right, that's kind of where we have him graded, right there in the third. We, we need another pass rusher on this team. We all know that. Like to think we're going to go out and get someone. We need to get someone in the draft here. Hey, DJ, how you doing? Good, how you doing, Coach? We're doing good. I'm looking right here at the DC. He's so freaking happy. I'm, I can't stand how happy he is. I'm telling you, yeah. he's really happy. Tell my daughter after what's up, man. DJ, what's up? How you doing, coach? We got to set the edge first before we rush the quarterback, all right? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, okay. All right, man. Well, can't wait to get you over here and get working, brother. Congrats again. Yeah, sir. Can't wait. All right. With the 80th pick. That happened fast. <laughs> DJ Johnson, linebacker, Oregon. Good job, Fit. Man, that, was, that happened fast, didn't it? Nice job. You took the call. It's awesome. I'm going to say that, too. Nicole answered the phone. Yeah. Nicole made the trade. Walk back into my office before you leave and look at my whiteboard from that discussion that we had. Okay. So I, didn't that. I didn't touch anything. We had circled the T.J. Johnson. And then we had written uh, 93 over here with an arrow up that we were going to trade up to get him. Uh, is that right, just when you had it? Uh, you had it. it was on the board. Oh, so you had it all mapped out there? It was all mapped out. I'm sitting there, and I get a text from a number. I look down, and it's Chandler. Zavala just sent me a text. No, he didn't. What did he say? doesn't happen often. I think it's happened maybe once before. And he said something, hey, just want you to know, I really want to be a Panther. Don't forget about me. You know, I want to come there. Hey, Dan, how many people you think, this is a serious question, how many people do you think saw Zavala? Look at this. Um, he just sent me a text. He would love to wear these colors and play next to Icky. And so I, and I didn't want to reach out to him 
Because then if teams call them or his agent finds out, then they'll start spreading it. Hey, listen, the Panthers are on them. They really like them. Listen, how many people saw this kid? Because he wasn't at the combine. How many like visits? Did how he many want? visits did he go on? But we had him here for, it wasn't a 30 visit, but it was like a visit. Could, would he know this? He could visit here. I'm trying to figure out what should I respond to him. So I don't want him telling other teams we're on him. Say what? I'm just going to say I appreciate the text. I don't want the kid talking to other teams. Thrilled that you're with us here on this Saturday for the final four rounds of this draft. Kansas City, are you ready? We came back Saturday morning, and he was the guy we wanted. He's the guy we targeted with our pick. At 114, I said, what's the value of going back to Saldori and Zavala's there? He was like, let's get Zavala. There was driven by him. Do you guys talk to AK about it? No. Oh, yeah. What did they say? That was a good title. With injuries with Brady and Austin coming back, we needed depth. We needed someone to come in who could fill in and compete. Do you feel like, would you be upset if we lost the ball? Yeah. This is the guts of this draft. This is the value of this draft. And as we get going, interior offensive line, I think we see some runs early there. Frank, you good to pick? We're, we're going we're gonna to get one of these guys. Yeah. Zavala? Yes, sir. Okay. You guys good? Yep. Good, good. We're good. Let's go. We got him. We're getting, we're getting Zavala. All right, uh, Chandler is Zavala. Yeah, Thomas. Love them. Probably spent maybe 10, 10 to 15 minutes in the interview process with him. This was a Extremely fast process of talking about his, his offense at NC State. Great communicator, great personality, engaged the whole time. So my favorite interview all I was. Yeah. Chandler, what's up, man? What up? How you doing? Hey, I appreciate the text yesterday. That helped. Oh, no problem. No, we were thinking about you the whole way. Um, walked into uh, today with you on our mind. So we're happy to get you. Just come in and compete your ass off, man. There's yeah, a real you know it. here. And uh, we love everything you have. Our thinking was, Offensive line became strength last year, and we wanted to keep adding to that. We want to keep our strength the strength. And then to have somebody like Chandler come in, that's what we're doing. Whew. Now we're good. We're house money now. Huh? We're house money now. Okay, so let's go to Frankfurt, Germany, for the latest pick in this draft. Uh, oh, no. Is that Johnny Hacker? Hecker! Yes! <laughs> Try it up! Guten Abend, Freunde! I'm Johnny Hecker, punter for the Carolina Panthers, coming to you live from Frankfurt, Germany, the heart of the NFL in Europe. I'm here with my incredible German fans in the beautiful Wummerberg. <laughs> And with the 114th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Chandler Zavala, guard, NC State. Alf Gates, and you know what we say, keep building! That's awesome. All right, we are back here in Kansas City. We're still in the show you every single pick from the podium mode of our draft coverage. How about, uh, talk about Jamie Robinson? Yeah. He's a good player. I was just talking to Randy Shannon. He said, he said he's a competitor and a dog. How many picks are we away? Three, four, five. Five more. Jamie's been up there. Jamie's good special teamers. Don't overthink it. No. You can take Robinson. Right. Carolina is now on the clock. Yeah, we're good. All right, guys, we're going to take Jamie Robinson. Hello. Hey, Jamie, it's Claire with the Carolina Panthers. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good, good. Hey, we're about to pick you right here. I'm going to let you talk to our head coach, Frank Reich. All right. When we call Jamie, it was kind of like he was very monotone. I, I wasn't the first one on the phone. They said he was very businesslike. Jamie. What's up, Coach? Hey, man, congratulations on becoming a Carolina Panther. Yes, sir. He was pissed off. Like, this is a guy that was, I think he said there's not 144 players better than me. 
Hey, just know I'm ready to work. I'm ready to come in and play. It ain't 144 guys better than me, and, and that's, that's just that. No, awesome. I love it. I'm going to hold you to that every day, right? We're going to challenge each other, sure. each other better, right? That's like the perfect attitude that we want on this team. We want a guy with a chip on his shoulder. The guy that's pissed off, a guy that's been slighted. And you can see that in his play and see it carry over to a phone call. That's a special competitor right there. Player-wise, strong safety, good short area quickness. He's got hips. I do think he's twitchy. This is a, a really good football player. Really productive in the run game. Outstanding tackler, so the missed tackle rate is really, really good and has been his entire career. This guy's fun to watch. <laughs> good player. Obviously, that draft room can use draft capital in next year's draft to move back in. But if they don't, that's the last pick of the draft. We are one team. We stress that. You can't have egos in here. We're not a staff that's ever going to take a player and just shove it down the coach's throat, or we're never going to take a, a player just because the coaches want them. We're in this together. Scott's leadership has been fantastic, not only with his own staff, with the scouts, but really with the coaching staff. You know, taking input from the coaches, trying to understand what we're doing schematically. When it comes together and you take a guy like Chandler Zvala and you see video of Campy in the back of the room clapping his hands, being all excited. <laughs> it makes you feel good because you want guys the coaches want to coach. Because there you're going to coach the heck out of them. They're going to develop them. What up, coach? Are you happy or what? You know I am. I know you are, buddy. We get to play some ball now with your boy again, right? Yes, sir. Let's go. We're in this together, and we're here to compete and win championships together. Do you want me to, me to put in a request for some Drake? There's nothing. There's never going to be anything wrong with Drake. That's never. never that's never a bad idea. Okay. What we'll might that happen? I'm an easygoing guy. I'm good with. It. I guess I'm used to silence. So okay. I'm just grateful to be okay. here. Okay. He's humble over hype. Just super humble, man. If we can get some Drake in the rotation. <laughs> Our quarterback's a big Drake fan. So is the quarterback coach, so. They say they got that Rick Ross on. Y'all know nobody that Ricky Rose, man. Uh, Come on, bro. Y'all don't mess with a bigger ball like I do, cuz. <laughs> so now, I'm going to break you right or left, all right? And all you're going to do is you're sprinting to that line until I call ball. Find a base, get it out. Okay, stuff you do naturally, stuff you do well. You know I'm splitting hairs with that, but yeah. I'm trying to be exact, right? Yeah. I'm just perfect as we can get. All right, I got you. Up, back, up. Back, right, ball. Back, up, back, get out, Bryce, go, go, go. Get back, Bryce, ball. Body language, body language, body language. Back, up, back, left. I'm gonna be here with the ball. All we're doing, working over our end cuts at the top of the rock. One, two, three, yeah, that, I love that. I love that. Nothing changes. Right? Down, 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 I transition. Nothing changes. Out of the way, out of the way, nice shot, Mingo! Pro receivers, man, make them catch it. Uh, good. Stay in a good groove. Stay in a good groove, that's it. Don't blink, calm, calm. Oh, let's go, let's go. Move, move! Let's go. Right up in his mask. Right up in his mask, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. Say one more time. Felt good, absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't have to tell you, but I looked back here, I like, damn, it's a good round. I'm glad to hear you said it felt good. He was no looking the third right, round of the drift throws. He was looking at me and throwing it down the hatch. Snapped it about halfway over his head. He didn't blink. He caught the ball and, and made the read at the same time and reset and threw the ball. But he's having fun. You know he cares. But he just, it, there's no anxiety, man. It could be the fourth quarter. You know, it could be at Tennessee and 106,000 people. And it feels like his heart rate never raises. He's just calm, in control, and poised. He's been here for a little bit, and every day he's here, you can see, oh yeah, he's everything and that and more. Starting this whole journey, is, it's been surreal. You know, it's a dream come true being able to play at this level and, and be a Panther. Going up from nine to one and giving up what we gave up, it's an aggressive move, but that's our philosophy. We're aggressive. We know what it takes to win, and we're gonna do what we need to to put ourselves in a position to get these players. What I love maybe more than anything else about Bryce is Although I know he's expecting big things out of himself and his team, he is a team first guy. Where I was picked doesn't entitle me to anything. I don't get any stats or any points. Our team doesn't benefit from that at all. All that stuff, you know, that stuff I can't control. What I can't control is what I put into the craft, how hard I work, how receptive I am to the coaches and players around me. 
love our roster, love where we're at, but we got a lot of work to do, and we got a lot to prove. Now with it coming to fruition, it's a quick, you know, congratulations, and then you get right to work. When you're doing something with an organization, you're turning that page. It's hard. It's, it's not an easy process. And it comes down to having the right people in the building, the right mindset, the right vision. And I think we've made that step. The work starts now.